O Radosh Filakom Radinus. Lord, we give you the glory and we give you the praise for you alone. You alone are God and there is none beside you. You are the power that saves us. And it is the spirit that makes us alive. And we have come to honor your name and give glory to the praise of your name. Speak to us, O oh Lord, today. Condition our hearts. Prepare our heart to receive the seed of your word. And let your word prosper in us and through us. Let your word transform and change us. Let your life give in spirit. Give us a new life. Refresh us and restore our soul, Lord. And make us all the more fitting for your noble use. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen and amen and amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, wherever you're watching me from, how are you guys doing? How has been your weekend? I trust that God has been with you, that God has been good to you. And I, I thank God for your life. I thank God for your life, your family, everything. Um, and I pray that God will continue to strengthen you. He will continue to give you the grace, the strength um, that you need to become better as we press ever closer to the mark of our highest calling in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, um, this afternoon or this morning or this evening, whatever, um, whatever you're watching me from all over the world, um, we're going to attempt to press further on the matters that the Lord has brought, brought um, called our consciousness to. Okay, In the month of June, from the beginning of the month of June, we started speaking about consecration. Okay? We started speaking about consecration, which is separating ourselves unto God's exclusive use. Okay, Being good for nothing else but to serve the purposes and the pleasure of God. Okay, It's a pleasure of God and to um, do all that, he has, all that he has planned for us to do for him. And for this reason, he gave birth to us. Okay, gave us his spirit and he gave us his word. He gave us light, the knowledge of his will, his presence, and he armed us with strength to be able to do and to be able to become all that he wants um, for us to be. And the Holy Spirit was whispering to me this morning. He was saying to me that um, it was just reminding me how God is in charge. You know, most of the time you always think that God is only in charge in church. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that what you think? God is in charge of the Christians. <laughs> That's more like it. You think that God is in charge of the Christians and then the devil is just roaming freely, free-ranging all over the world and stuff like that. Yes, it is true that at a time when the, the angels appeared, presented themselves to the Lord and the devil also present, presented himself and the Lord asked him, this is in the book of Job chapter number one now, and, and the Lord asked um, Satan, where have you been? Where are you coming from? And he said, from to and fro, um, roaming around in the earth. And you would almost think that the devil just goes wherever he likes and does whatever he likes. Um, it is not so. God is in charge. Okay? Um, and God is not just in charge of the Christians or, you know, those who pray in the name of Jesus, God is in charge of everything, okay? This is God's show. He's running the show. He's pulling the strings. He's calling the shot. He is, this is his dominion, okay? And he is in charge in all of the places of his dominion. And nothing escapes God's dominion. Nothing, okay? Maybe that would bring a little bit of relief to you because you may think my life, maybe I've just wandered so far away from where God is in charge. And the, the place where I live is... Uh, violence and the, the, the devil is running the show it, it, it is not so okay even the place where the devil is running the show he is not doing it completely outside of god's knowledge 
In other words, there is nothing happening in the kingdom of darkness that, that, that God is oblivious of. And, and if God hears it, he will say, oh, really? That, that's happening? No, there is nothing. There is nothing that can happen in all of God's creation that God, that is, that God is in the dark of it. Okay, He is the all-knowing God. Nothing is hidden from Him. Okay, so your little life cannot be hidden from God. You know, I, I remember I was speaking to my sister a few days ago. And I was speaking to her how that we must, we must do all that God wants us to do. And, and she was, you know, we we're just discussing, you know, matters. And she was telling me how that, you know, sometimes we have to move first and, and then God will move with us. And I was saying, well, um, yeah, not always. So you can't move and then tell God to move and follow you. No, you wait for the cloud, okay? You wait for the cloud. You wait for God to move. Then you follow him. You don't move and tell God, yeah, well, yeah, God, I'm going north. So can we go now? See, that's what, unfortunately, that's the kind of Christianity. People are preaching that now. Okay. And I was listening to a reputable preacher. I, very, I don't want to mention his name now. And he was preaching. And, and, and a short clip was captured and pasted on Facebook. So I saw it on Facebook. Um, and it's a very, very decent, you know, bite-sized sermon, maybe 10, 11 minutes. So that's, that's decent length for you to know that this is what this person is saying, okay? So I'm not talking about 15 seconds except from a video. I'm talking about a decent, and he was talking about, and I, I think I know what he's trying to say, but you see, this morning the Holy Spirit was saying to me, he said, be careful about what you hear people say, because most of the time, people are not saying what they really mean. And it is not trying to be malicious. It is one of the deficiencies of the human nature. That our mouth cannot even adequately communicate what is in our heart. So, has it ever happened to you that you're saying something and then you perceive that the person you're speaking to is not getting it? You feel maybe it's because of how I'm saying it. You're like, you look, I, I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Like, I, you, you feel like my words are not doing justice to... It is not adequately communicating what I'm thinking right now. Like, you say it and you feel, no, no, I didn't say it right, I didn't say it right. Then you, you give it a shot again. You try to say it a different way and you, you, you keep trying because you're not really hitting it. Mm. Because you know what you're feeling. You know what you really want to say, but words are failing you. Okay. One of the deficiencies of the human, human nature is we lack the, competent, the competence to communicate our deepest feelings. Do you understand this? Because the chain between the, the, the information chain between the soul, the spirit, the soul, the body was broken in the fall of man. So we became insufficient. And this is one of the primary problems in the place of prayer. It is that we don't know how to even communicate. We don't know what we should be praying for. Did you see this? Because what we should be praying for is written in our heart. And we don't know how to read our heart even. You know, people will say things like, follow your heart. Let me tell you something. You don't even know your heart. So you think your heart is what you are feeling. Your heart is not what you are feeling. Because you see, your heart, the, what feelings is emotion. And emotion is the voice of the soul. Did you see it? But you see, you thought that your heart is that thing that you were feeling. So you followed your heart. But what you really followed is your soul. You followed your emotions. So, this, this prominent preacher was preaching and he, he said, um, nothing just happens. If you, if you, if you listen, if you've listened to preachers, you know what I'm talking about. He said, nothing just happens. Nothing happens until you make it happen. So, you have to... So, I understand what he's trying to say. But the danger of that now is, to the people listening, if they are not skilled and, and, have, and are grounded in the word, what they will hear is, until you move. When you, when you begin to move, then God will now get involved in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? Get active first. Be proactive. Don't be lazy. You see? Yeah. Don't be lazy. Yeah. Do something. Get involved in something. Yeah. And once you get involved in something, once you're actively doing something, then God will now come and help you. And, and, and they say one adage, and they'll say, heaven helps those who help themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like, start doing something. And then God will, um, God will bless the work of your hands. So just get something doing and then God will come and bless it. Now, are we permitted to do just anything? No. And so you will quote to me. The Bible says, uh, blessed is the man who um, does not walk in the council of the sinner and sit in the seat of the scumful. You know that scripture, Psalm chapter number 1, verse 1. 
And it now, the Bible will not say he is like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Okay, bringing forth its fruits in its seasons, its leaves will not wither, and whatsoever it does will prosper. Mm -hmm. Now, you can take that scripture without skill and feel like just anything you do. Now, the problem is, can you just do anything? Mm -hmm. Do you even have the lifetime? Is your lifetime even sufficient to do everything? So you see, the question now is, or the argument remains that you cannot edit out the part of the Holy Spirit calling the shots and dictating your life one step after another because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There is a path chosen for you. Do you understand this? And it is in that path that you must find your footing. And you don't know that path except the Holy Spirit helps you navigate. Do you see this now? So you are not in the congregation of those who whatsoever he does. Calm down, relax. You can't just do whatsoever. Did you see this? And so if you don't know scripture a lot, you will look at scripture and then you will take those scriptures and you will use it to run your life into the ditch. Yeah. And it's not because the word of God wants to hurt you. It is because you have not engaged the help of the one who has the true interpretation of, interpretation of what you're reading. So the Bible is not a storybook. It's not a textbook. Is a spiritual book. Okay. So, now, what I want to speak to you about this morning, I'm going to make it as brief as I did on Friday. That's how I want to make this particular series. I want it to enter because if I preach a long preaching, you will, you will, you will, you will mistake it for another preaching. This is not a topic that I can preach long. There are some topics that I can preach two hours. I can preach four hours. And you know me, if you don't stop me, <laughs> I just won't stop. I'll just keep going. Like, the more I'm... The engine is just firing up. The grace just keeps pouring. And as long as the grace keeps pouring, I can speak for 10 hours, 20 hours, 2 days. I won't just stop. I'll just keep going. And scriptures will not end. Mm -hmm. But this particular series, I want to make it precise. I want to drive it to the point so that it really blesses you. Okay? And I'm checking how long I've spoken for. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it short and sharp. What I want to speak to you about this morning is something that I hardly hear people talk about these days anymore. I, and, and, and it troubles me. I hardly hear pastors talk about it. I hardly hear leaders talk about it. Shepherds talk about it. Okay, so we've spoken about consecration. And I'm not going to go over it again, okay? It is setting yourself apart, okay? Setting yourself apart intentionally, acknowledging that you were saved for a purpose. You were saved to pleasure one, the great monarch, our master, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you intentionally separating, you intentionally separating yourself onto that purpose, applying your heart to all the details of the requirement of living the life that you were redeemed to live. Okay, this is consecration. And consecration is required for you to be able to do business, obtaining the materials required to build the kind of life that God wants to take pleasure in. Okay, the kind of one he can associate with and put his life on. This series will be long then. Or oh, if I decide to make it short. No, no, it won't be long, Lulu. The series will not be long. We're gonna you you know me by now. I, I take my time to speak about whatever topic. Okay? Because I feel the reason why people don't get stuff is because pastors feel like the more sermons they can preach, the more it looks like they are, they have skill. Yeah. No. Sometimes because what you don't realize is that someone that you preach your 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 um sheep, they didn't get it. They didn't understand it. They were excited whilst you were at it because you, you planned the summer, you chose your English, you, you've whooped their emotion up, their life has not changed. Did you see this? The problem they had is still there. That guy is still fornicating, that guy is still smoking, that guy is still under depression. He, has, he is not free, he is not free. Even though he shouted in church, he shouted, praise God, glory to God, shut up, Allah, and he did all of those things. Did all of those Christian gymnastics that we do to approve to our pastor that he's preaching well. Yet, your life is not changing. God forbid that I become another pastor like that. So I can keep bringing you new word every week. No, 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 no. We will stay. We will camp at that word until you get it. Do you understand this? And then we can move on. We have to be able to measure our progress. That's how I do. Until I get something. I don't just... I'm not quick. I'm not quickly in a rush to... Go, oh, we have to match up. We have to be skilled in Christ. No, 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 no. Let me get what I'm on. Let me eat this thing. Digest it. Let it begin to work in me then i can move to something else Amen. okay and you have to be thorough like that so it doesn't mean it's going to be long lulu it means that i am intentionally making it small chunks so that you can 
it, it, it your and your attention span i can i can i can maximize it do you understand it I'm, I'm trying to help you do you understand this so please pay attention don't, don't start thinking about oh it's gonna be long that's none of your business either i make it short or long that's not your business your business is to get it because getting it is what changes your life so we started speaking about consecration now i want to take it fur further because if we don't begin to find the use for this consecration then you will lose it okay you will lose it and then you quickly start asking yourself, what is the, the point of all this? You know, trying to be clean and holy and pure. Um, why? Why? Okay, so you see, if you don't have motivation, you won't have the you won't see the need to stay there. Mm. Yeah, because human beings we're very busy, you want to just go do something else. So I want to speak tonight how to appropriate the life-given spirit, the how to how to partner with the life-given spirit. Okay, and of course, the life giving spirit is the Holy Spirit. Okay, and he is a life giving spirit, simply means he gives a kind of life, and this life is what I want us to examine. Okay, when we lay foundation on Friday, how that the authority, the freedom that comes by uh, belonging to Christ, you don't have that freedom because you were a good person, because you qualified for it. Do you understand this? You cannot qualify for it, you cannot work for it. There is nothing you can give in exchange for it. It was given you like a verdict in court. You showed up in court for a crime and someone else decided to pay for your punishment for your crime. And on the account of someone else paid, paying, the judge said, okay, yeah, that's admissible in court. We'll take this person's punishment for the punishment you're supposed to take. So now you're free. Okay, that was how our salvation is. We sinned, we're supposed to die. Jesus Christ chose to die in our space. So it is a substitution thing. Do you see this? You see, Jesus took your place in death and destruction. He tasted it for you so that you don't have to taste it. And on the strength of that, God declared end of war with you. He says, I'm no longer fighting you. I'm no longer angry with you. Now you can enjoy every good thing that free people enjoy. Okay? That is how your freedom came by. Now, I, I see, as I've said this thing now, it kind of makes sense because you think, okay, it makes sense. But you see, when you realize that it still doesn't make sense, it's, it's still not helping you in your everyday life. <clears throat> that is the reason why God sent me to bring this particular series, to help you understand the inner workings and the inroad of these things, and then it can change your life. Do you understand this? Okay, so how do I become free from this, my lying that I still, because I still find myself lying. I still find myself fornicating. I still find myself angry. I still find myself doing all these things that I know I shouldn't be doing, yet I am free. Yet I have heard that I, by now I should be free. Why am I not free yet? Or why is the freedom not an experience? What is missing? What's wrong? That's what I want to help you with tonight. Or this afternoon. Or this morning. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Has that ever happened to you? Maybe you're, maybe you've gotten it. You're, you're perfect. You're perfect. Everything is just... But I see people struggle a lot, okay? I see people and, and it's like they can't even talk about it because everybody just feels, maybe it's just, one, it's just one of those things. Some people just feel something is just particularly wrong with them, okay? I've lived many years of my life in the past. I used to feel, I don't think this Christianity, I, really, I think I'm just trying to, it's just a wannabe. I don't think this purity thing and this sinless life, I don't think it's for me because I have tried and I meant well, I really wanted to serve God, I really wanted to be good, it just was not happening. Like the more I tried, the more, the more it becomes hard to, to just live a holy life. So I began to say to myself, I think I'm just flogging a dead horse. I don't think, I said, I think not everybody was designed to be pure, to be holy. I think some of us, we, there's just not the way we can do. See, that is the danger of if you don't understand how to walk your salvation you will get walked up you will get frustrated you will get tired because you will keep trying now the problem is you're not supposed to even try you're not supposed to try on the strength of yourself do you understand this now because you think i have to determine to not sin so i will now go by that my determination and then i'm now supposed to achieve a result of purity yeah that's what you do See, that never has worked, never can work. It will never work. You will never succeed. And I'm not, I'm not cursing you. 
I'm telling you a truth. And you can try for as long as possible. 50 years, you will still not hit a breakthrough. No one has ever succeeded. Trying to please God by their own strength, you will never do it. It's impossible. It's impossible. In fact, God himself will make a case. He will, he will, he will make a case. That was exactly the matter with the law and why God sent Jesus. It was what the law could not do. The law could tell you what is right and what is wrong, but the law could not empower you to do what is right. That's the difference between the word of grace. The word of grace does not just tell you what God likes and what God does not like. It gives you the ability. It furnishes the requirement, what you need to actually do what is right. It gives it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ooh, Pastor Bernard turns on the light. <laughs> no, 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 that's yellow light. That's yellow light. Okay, so, yeah, that's fine now. So Romans chapter number six. So let me, let me try to help you um, this afternoon um, over the next couple of weeks, okay? So let's try to help ourselves. Let's try to understand this life-giving spirit and the life that he gives. Okay. So let's start like this. When you hear the word life, what comes to your mind? I really wish this could be an interactive extension. I, I really wish that you were sitting in front of me and I can look at you in the face and ask you questions and, and really hear your response. When you hear the word, that's why I've been sinning even more. That's right, Lulu. The more you try by your own strength to say, ha, ah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm made up my mind, I'm not gonna sin this week. You will. You do more than last week. Yeah, you just you top your own record. You do more. I want to show you how to how to really get to where you really want to go. You know where you really want to go is you just want to serve God. You want to be a good girl. You want to be a good boy. You want to do what is right. Let me just say that. You want to do what is right. That's what I want to help you achieve. Okay. So focus on me and pay attention. When you hear the word life, what comes to your mind? When you just hear the word life, what, what hits your mind? Okay, since I can't get your answers on the, on the go, I'm just gonna ask myself the question, I'm gonna answer the question. Okay, but if you wanna respond, you can, you can just type a response, I'll read it, I'll look at it and I'll read it. Okay, so when you hear the word life, okay, two things comes to mind. Um, the first thing is existence. Yeah. Okay? Existence. Something is existing. It is there. Okay? It's existing. So animals exist. Okay? Animals give birth. And then so a dog gives birth to a puppy and now the puppy's life starts. Okay? But the puppy's life had started. A, a woman gives birth to a child. Okay? The day the child was born, was that the day the child began to exist? No. The child existed for nine months prior this time, okay? This is the first time you are physically seeing the child, okay? The first time the child is now a separate entity outside and separated from the mom, okay? It's what we see when babies are brought out of the womb, when they are delivered in labor words. But the baby had been alive nine months, yeah? Nine months, okay? So Lulu said nature, when you hear life, okay? So that's another kind of life, okay? So within the nature, there are lives, isn't it? Nature is an ecosystem, okay, that hosts various forms of life or calibers of life, okay? But let's think about life. So let's become more general now. When you hear the word life, for anything, okay, two things should hit your mind. It is the existence and the sustenance of the existence of anything, okay? That's life, isn't it? It is that something must first exist, then it should continue to exist. If it's ceases to exist then you say it's dead mm -hmm. isn't it mm. now even a primary school child should be able to understand this i want to help you understand something today and this should change your life okay so when you hear the word life the two things two sides to life existence and sustenance continuity okay existence continuity existence continuity and the moment there is no continuity to existence anymore death okay that's end of life okay now now there are different forms of life now okay so we have the plant life well two kinds plant life um the animal life and then there is the inanimate life okay things that are not alive or maybe cannot grow um 
they don't grow and they probably don't they, they just they just dead so for example everything has a lifespan isn't it even if you buy a tv it has a lifespan it works mm -hmm. and then when the life is over then the tv just it will just stop working okay your car has a lifespan um these are things that are built by men, okay? These are things that came into existence by the craftsmanship of men. And they, they have their own lifetime or lifespan attached or allocated to them as given by their creator, men, okay? I.e. your TV, your pressing iron, your microwave, your car and stuff like that. Buildings, okay? They have lifetime. Have you seen buildings that are just so old and they, these buildings are going to collapse if someone doesn't mm -hmm. do anything about it? Yeah, because it has, not, it has now lived its life. Okay, it has now come to the end of his life. So, but let's focus on human life now. Okay, that's where we want to go to. We don't really want to think about cows and, and goats. We don't really care about them right now. We, 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 we want to focus on human beings. Okay, so when you think about human life, two things, as we have talked about, the existence of the man, human life and the continuity of the human life. Mm -hmm. Now, the existence um, is not much to talk about okay there is two different or multiple opinion about the existence of the human life okay as for us christians we believe that human life came to be as um, a product of god's decision he decided to give birth okay just like you your parents your dad met your mom and he decided to make babies isn't it and then the decision gave birth to you you are the consequence of that decision or you are the result let me use the word consequence mm -hmm. you are the you are the result of the decision of your parents okay and the bible records that yeah. in john chapter number one he said this kind of sons to those who believe john chapter number one to those who believe he gave them rights to become sons of god children of god is he now went further he says not children born according to the decisions of a father and a mother mm -hmm. But those children born by the Spirit. Okay? So, human beings procreate. They give birth. And, and But if, you, if we trace the origin of men, okay, so the first one to ever, you know, exist. Um, for us Christians, we believe God gave birth to us. And then to those who are not Christians, they believe in whatever they believe in. I don't want to go into it. I don't care. There's only one that, <laughs> there's only one that I care about. And it's God's... Um, being our father anything else is just a lie as far as i'm concerned i don't care so i'm going to focus on that so god gave birth to us so the existing part of our life was done and dusted one time god gave birth to us ah so the contemplation of the meat of the matter now is inside the space of sustenance continuity okay this is now where we are one years old you celebrate your one year old birthday then you become two then you become three then you grow your tea then you stop drinking milk, then you start eating sweetie, then you start mm. enrolling in school, then you buy those little cute school uniform and you did your first day in school mm -hmm. and then you finish and you, then you finish with then you start going year one, year two and then you finish primary school and you go to, see that is inside the continuity. Yeah. Okay. And then you grow up, have your own kids, build your business, get a job, do whatever you want to do, grow old and then you die. Yeah. Okay. That's the end on of the continuation of your life okay so the moment you can't continue anymore that's the point where you die now isn't it and you exit this world okay and at some point in your life in your continuity maybe you've given birth to your own kids too and then they do their own life too okay so we want to focus on the continuity of life okay in that space is everything that we talk about so from our government our economy to our schools family system friendship relationship food fashion, um, TV, phones, internet, everything that constitutes what we do every day, okay? It is within the continuity space of life, isn't it? Yeah. So, life, existence, and continuity. I'll say in, in, inside continuity is where all our discussion lies, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, it, it is inside the continuity that, that God stepped in mm -hmm. to... The world he created, okay? The almighty God became a man and he stepped into the earth. Isn't it? Inside the continuity of life. So now, the contemplation now is, or the fight between God and men and demons and all of these things, is who decides the condition? Who decides the way of life? How the continuity is to go? Who decides? Isn't it? 
That's where the big fight is. You know, if you if you're just joining now, if you're just listening to me now, you're gonna have to listen to everything I said because this kind of discussion, if you join halfway, you may not get it. Do you see this? And if you've been listening to me, don't lose me now because you've been listening to me so you understand what I'm talking about. Because every time I mention life, if someone just joins me, they're going to be thinking, oh, he's talking about Instagram life. It's, there's different things called life these days, isn't it? There's Facebook life, there's Instagram, Instagram life, there's all manner of life. But you know what life I'm talking about. So there's two sides to life. What is it? Existence and continuity. Okay, continuation of life. And all our discussion is inside the continuation of life. The existence of life that is settled, okay? Everybody can choose whatever they want to choose as the origin of life. As for us Christians, we believe that God is our father. He gave birth to us as a man gives birth to a child. God gave birth to us, so he is our father. He is not just our God. He is our father, okay? That is... That is and not just Christians, God is the father of every human being, he's the Lord God of all flesh, okay? And then the scientists who believe whatever I want to believe in, you know, other religions believe whatever they want to believe. But I don't want to talk about that, I'm just going to focus on God is the father of all flesh, okay? So existence settled. Now, continuity or sustenance of life, in the space of sustenance of, of life, that's where we live our life. Okay, so if you're going to live 100 years, okay, so your life existed on day one and then you're going to exist, you're going to be sustained for another 100 years mm -hmm. and then you will die. Okay, now in the time when your life is being sustained, okay, your life is being continued, your mortal life now, okay, continues in this space called the earth, okay, the big fight is who controls what happens in the continuity of life. Do you understand this? Now, when I say continuity, I'm not talking about after life when you now die and resurrect. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. That's not my gripe. My gripe is now that you are alive as a mortal human being in this earth. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? The big fight is who decides? Okay? Now, in the space of continuity of life, there are two entities, okay, that factor into what everybody within that space does. Okay, and it is God or the devil. Okay, and God has his kind of life. Okay, and every time I mention life, it is this too. God has a start and a continuity package of life. The devil also has a continuity package of life. It doesn't have a start, okay, because only God can originate the life. The devil does not have the ability for that. However, it can influence continuity of life. Okay. In other words, it can create lifestyle. See, when you hear the word style, lifestyle, it's talking about what happens within the time that a man is existing yeah. in this world. Yeah. Do you understand this? I'm making it as lay as possible so that you would not say I didn't understand what he said. Do you understand this? So the big fight is who decides who do people follow? Who who sets the benchmark? Who designs the curriculum? Who decides the way in which people live? Okay? So when you hear the word life also, we're not be, in the context of what we're talking about now, that you now begin to think about things like culture and tradition, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and trends, events, okay? That occupy the continuity side of our life. Okay? The, how the school systems operate. What is school? Should there be school? Should there not be school? Um, if there would be school, how would they operate? What is school for? Okay, the definition to things. All of these things, um, who decides and whose decision is important? Okay, this is the argument that we spend all our lives doing. Okay, and in this, you have to pick a side. Do you understand this? You have to pick a side. So every day we are confronted with decisions of who to follow. And it will now fascinate you to know that as far as the earth is concerned, the most popular and the most widely accepted way of life is the one that was pioneered by the devil. So, see, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. So, don't look at me and say you don't understand what I'm saying now, okay? So, within the continuity side of our life, the part B, okay? The part A is existence. The part B is 
continuity, sustenance, okay? In the space of this sustenance, this is where all of us, this is where you live your life. You will start, you will live your life, and then you end, you die, and then you leave, and then your kids will do their own too, okay? And then it just continues like that. Okay, so within this space of continuity of life, that is where all this conversation, okay, every conversation is within that space of who, who decides what happens. Okay, what should we do? Should we, what should we eat? Oh, now, people can eat mango. Oh, really? And then, okay. Oh, we can eat apple. Oh, the grapes is not that cool. Oh, see, all this conversation about food, about sex, about relationship, marriage, um, education, government, politics, all of these things abide in this continuity part of existence. Okay, we exist, then we continue. Within this continuity, everybody will do whatever they will do, become whatever they will become, achieve whatever they would achieve, and then when, when the continuity comes to an end, that's when they die and exit. Okay, all right then. So, what we do in this continuity is what we call way of life. Okay, what way should we apply? in our sustained existence. Do you understand this now? What way should we follow? Concerning education or learning, what way should we follow? Concerning feeding, what way should we follow? Concerning habits and behavior, what way should we follow? Concerning government, governance, justice, judgment and equity, what way should we follow? Okay, this is the big question. Okay, and there are two ways. There are two ways. Or at least there is two origin of ways. The one is God. Yahweh. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let me just be precise because there are so many gods. Okay, God. El Shaddai. Yahweh. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is the father of lights. And who dwells in unapproachable lights. In him there is no shadow of turning. This is the God that I'm talking about. And this one is the originator of all lives. Settled, done and dusted. No, no further discussion. Okay. And he also has a way of sustenance. And so within the sustenance, what the number one, uh, one of the originators of the way is God. And the other person, the other entity is the devil. He cannot originate, okay? So he cannot pioneer existence, but he can pioneer, he can influence continuity. Yeah. Okay, okay. So he is two influences now. God's influence, his way of life, okay? His take and his stipulation concerning how things should go in any area of life you can think about, okay? God has his own way and the devil has his own way. And unfortunately... The devil's way is the most popular, the one that is known the most, and the one that is actively operational in most human beings on earth. Mm. Settled. Make sense? Mm. Okay. Now, this is the way that you were born into. Yeah? This is the way that you were born into. And when did this way start? Okay? For mankind, this way entered our world when Adam sinned. Okay? When Adam sinned, the configuration of his setup and his creation was altered. It was immutated. It was damaged. Okay? And his damaged and mutated, degraded self was perfect for the way of the devil. Perfect. Like, it was just like hand in glove. Perfect. The man was not created for the devil. He was not created to be perfect. Okay? It is a consequence of his choice. Okay? It made him fall from the God perfect level to the evil compatible level. Do you understand this now? So he became compatible with evil. Okay. Now, it is from that mutated, degraded, fallen state that all human beings... So, that's where all human beings came from. And we all inherited that nature. That falling from grace, from God level, from God standard into a mutated, evil, compatible setup. Okay? That's what all of us inherit. Nobody can come into this world outside of that setup. You have to come through that setup. Do you understand this? Okay, so this is life. This is life. 
So the popular way of life, the popular way of life, the one that most people know is the one pioneered by the devil. Okay, and his children and his sons. But the one that Jesus came to reintroduce us to is God's one. And that is why Jesus is now called the way. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. When he introduced himself, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Okay? So Jesus came to introduce us to a way, a kind of sustenance, a kind of existence, the kind that God is in charge of. God is the architect. For Abraham was searching for a city whose architect and builder was God. Okay, initially he thought what he was looking for was Canaan. Then when he got to Canaan, then he realized that, oh, Canaan is not what I'm looking for. And Jesus said, and Abraham saw my days and he rejoiced. <laughs> so, the way of life that Jesus, so what I'm trying to tell you is, you see, when Jesus came, okay, he didn't just come to just die. And that's what you think. He just, he just came to die. Why did he die? He died to afford you entry into a way. Do you understand this? That's why he died. What he brought was a way. And what he preached about was a way. It is a kingdom way of life. Do you understand this? And Jesus preached all through his life. He preached about the kingdom. Kingdom. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, and he will use examples of the ways that you guys know to try to explain a way that you don't yet know. And he told them, I am a messenger. I brought a message. He brought a message about a kind of way. That's all the Father sent him to come and um, advertise to us. And to tell us that this one who brought the message is the gate into that way. Do you understand this? So, the, and when I say way, what I want you to have in your mind is lifestyle. Okay? Okay. So, Jesus came to bring us into a lifestyle. And this lifestyle, we could not enter into it just by deciding that, yeah, I accept. No, no. Okay? It, it is not good enough. So Jesus paid the price to afford everybody a ticket. So that when you now accept, he hands you a ticket so that you can enter into that lifestyle. So now you can leave that lifestyle. Do you understand this? Ah, okay. So when you get born again, the problem is no one took time to explain to you this lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. So, you just think it is now your responsibility to just get up the following day and just begin to try to leave the Christ. So, who taught you? What do you know to do? Yeah, so what do you do first thing in the morning in this new lifestyle? <laughs> oh, you knew that by your bed and you pray. You see, that's, that's the beginning of your problem. Because you think that kneeling down by your bed to pray is the way to start a day with in, in this new lifestyle. Mm. No, no, no. 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 Okay, so now we're struggling between two lifestyles now. Okay, this is the struggle of every man. It is a lifestyle struggle. Isn't it? And this is what Jesus came to straighten up. Now, as I begin to continue, because I'm going to round up today. I'm going to round up. Um, I'm going to round up in... How long have I been speaking for? I started speaking 6.30, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 10 past. So it's now about 10 past. So I've spoken 40 minutes. Okay, 5 minutes now, round up. So keep watch of the time. 5 minutes, I'm going to round up. So, Jesus came to bring us into a way. Okay, into a lifestyle. Now, this lifestyle, this conflicting lifestyles... Okay, because the lifestyle that God pioneered and created for us to live is in head on collision with the one the devil pioneered. Okay, so it is the conflict of lifestyle. This is the issue of the world. Do you understand this? Remember, within this lifestyle is the culture, the tradition, the way of thinking, the way of um, interpreting things, how to judge things, how to act, how to react, your speech, your conduct, your character, your behavior, your pursuits, your desires is within, is a lifestyle thing, okay? So it's not an event. It is a lifestyle. It is what you do continuously and it does not, that is you. This is what Jesus came to fix. So this whole gospel 
Jesus came to fix a lifestyle. Because newsflash, you're not going to have a new lifestyle when the rapture sounds and you now take your glorified self and you now go to heaven. Automatically, you're not going to have a new lifestyle. No. No. The whole intention is that you will have, you will have inherited the new lifestyle. You would have started living the lifestyle so that when the trumpet sounds, today is not the teaching about trumpet sounding, okay? But see, what, what you know about the trumpet sound is the end of this mortal life will come, okay? And then everything will wrap up and then we're going to transition into a different existence. Okay, so let's hold on to that line of thought. When that transition comes, okay, when rapture happens and trumpet sounds and the end of time comes and all of those things, you know, happens, you think that you're going to enter into a different lifestyle, into a different government. No. The idea is that you will have known that government now. You have been adulterated into the government. You have been inducted into the government. You are now, you are, you are operating the government now. Do you understand this? The kingdom is not coming. The kingdom already came. So the government of God is not coming. The government of God already came. The lifestyle of the kingdom is not coming. The lifestyle of the kingdom already came. That was the whole essence of why Jesus came. God's way of thinking, God's way of doing things, God's economy, God's government, God's society is not coming. It already came. Why are we not seeing it? People don't understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? People don't understand it. Some people are still waiting for something to come. Some people buy the idea that it came, but they don't know how to operate it. This is what I believe the Holy Spirit wants to begin to help us. Listen to me, we are going to be the generation. Amen. <laughs> that is why our struggle is like no generation has ever seen. Amen. Do you understand this? You are living in a fantastic time. Let me tell you something. The, the kind of demons that are in the earth right now, they were not in the earth 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago. There are little demons in the earth right now. And this is not to get you scared. This is to just level up with you so that you understand what time what time it is we are living in a crazy time this is what we were talking about this morning okay we're living in a time that is so i don't know how to explain it we're living in a, at an in in amazing times you know amazing times we're living in exciting times as well so you understand the gist of the life of the, of the lifestyle now that is what jesus came to that is what Jesus brought. He brought us a way of life, okay? And he came to save us into a way of life. And the problem is, if you don't understand this way of life, if no one takes time to teach you. Now, I cannot 100% teach you the way of life. I can show you the one who teaches. Ah, and I will show you that in scriptures. When Apostle Paul began to say, our job is not to... We are not the one that changed your life with truth. We, we, we show you the one who changes. Ah! I saw that scripture, Ivana, and my head was, my head popped. <laughs> I said, thank God. Apostle Paul said it. Thank God it is in scripture. So that no pastor will become a superstar. No pastor will become a superstar. No man is worth listening to. What makes men worth listening to is the spirit that dwells in them. The reason why you're listening to me, or maybe you should listen to me, it's, be, it's not because I'm cool, I'm intelligent, I know what to say. No, it is God who has hired my vocal cords to speak to people. That it is the God that you're listening to. Do you understand this? Not me. If me minus God, I'm just as miserable as any other guy. There's nothing cool about me. The only thing cool about me is the God that lives on the inside of me. That is the cool one. That is the good God. That is the full, excited, intelligent, wise, powerful God. The one that is worth listening to. It is his words that save, not my words. So this sound coming out of my mouth are not my words. They are formed, framed by the intelligence and the wisdom of the Spirit of God. He gives us the words to speak. Do you understand this? So let me show you one scripture so that you don't say, oh, this guy didn't even read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll close. In fact, no, I'm not showing you any scripture. The same scripture I will show you is Romans chapter number 8, verse 1 and 2. I gave you an assignment. Did you do it? Did you do the assignment, Lulu? Did you... What, 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 what was the assignment that I gave? What, what was the assignment that I gave on Friday? What did I tell you guys to go and do throughout the weekend? 
This is how I know who listened and who didn't listen. If you listen, it will reflect in your life. If you don't listen, your report card will also say it. For the benefit of those that are watching me for the first time, I'm going to say it again. Because I'm going to expect you. So those of you who started doing yours during the weekend, I want you to do it for the rest of this week. And for those who are just listening to me for the first time, I want you to practice and try this this week. It will change your life. There's no harm in trying, isn't it? Okay. So I want you to do this. Romans chapter number 8 verse 1 and 2. I want you to read it. I want you to read it so much, it's easy to cram. Okay, you can just look at it and cram it. Okay, you can just commit it to memory. I want you to mutter it under your voice. Say it to yourself so many times that you lose count. Okay, so that you will not be able to say how many times you've said it. Say it so many times that you lose count and put your name. Okay, so I'm going to read it now. Okay, I'm going to say it. This is how you should do it. Okay, so Romans chapter number 8, verse 1. It says, there is therefore now. You see, it will, it will sound different in different translations. Whatever translation you're reading, this is what must be the, this is what, this is the content of Romans chapter number 8, verse 1 and 2. Okay, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And be, because you belong to him, the, the life-given spirit, the power of the spirit of life has now set you free. From the power of sin that leads to death. Okay? This is Romans chapter uh, chapter number 8 verse 1 and 2. So the way I want you to read it is, you now say, There is therefore now no condemnation for me. Then you mention your name. Because I belong to Christ Jesus. And because I belong to him, the life, the power of the life-given spirit has set me free. You mention your name again. From the power of sin that leads to death. Okay? That's a simple assignment. I want you to say that to yourself. So when you say that to yourself, you have said Romans chapter number 8 verse 1 and 2 to yourself. I want you to say that to yourself as many times as possible during the week that you lose count of how many times you've said it. Say it too many times. Just keep saying it. Just keep saying it until it enters your spirit, the reality of what you're saying. That the life source, the reason why you are alive, okay, is the power of the life-giving spirit. And the reason is because you belong to Jesus. Two things you get from there. Because you belong to Jesus, you are no longer condemned. You are free. You are no longer condemned. You are free. Because you belong to Jesus. And how do they do it? By the power of the life-giving spirit. Because you belong to Jesus, you are no longer condemned. You are free. How? By the power of the life-giving spirit. Because you belong to Jesus, you are no longer condemned. You are free. How? By the power of the life-giving spirit. That's what I want you to do this week. See it to yourself as many times as possible. You will die to dependency on your, on your own determination and strength. And you will now begin to open up to where true life streams from. Do you understand this? That's the instruction of God for, to you. Okay? I just came to give you the instruction. And when you do it, then you will see what God can do. Who has believed our report? Those are the ones that the hand of the Lord will be revealed to um, Donna, what's your question? I'm going to round up. Now, I'll finish preaching for today. Um, what's your question, Donna? It's hard to memorize it. No, Lulu. It's not hard to memorize. What are you talking about? You've memorized harder stuff, Lulu. I, I bet you still remember some lines from some movies you've watched a long time ago. So don't tell me it's hard. You, you read it. Yeah. You write the exams in school and you pass, isn't it? How do you do it? You remember what you've taught and then you write down the exam paper, isn't it? Yeah, so God, see this, take this as seriously, more seriously than your exam papers in school. Read verse 1 and 2 of Romans chapter number 8 and memorize it. You have to know it. I don't know how, I don't know what kind of church you guys go to in this day and age anymore. When I was younger, we go to children's church. What we all go there to do is we learn Bible story and we learn memory verse. It's called memory verse. And then there comes a Sunday, maybe one Sunday in a year that we come and do competition. <laughs> memory verse competition. Yeah, you see kids in competition and you build, you say how many scriptures you'll be able to memorize. You will hear little kids. They will start reading Psalms, pro, Proverbs, Psalms. They will start telling you scriptures, 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 scriptures. That was how I grew up. That's the kind of church that I went to. So that when you're growing up, that's, let me tell you, some of, the, some of the scriptures that I know now, I've known it since I was a child, since I was a kid. This is not, uh, oh, I just grew up, I got born again, I started reading the Bible. No! Before I even knew how to open the Bible, I had known scriptures. Why? Because our, our children teacher in our, in our church, 
uh, the kids' class, they will just they will tell us so you say the Bible verse. Um, Psalm chapter number 2 verse 7 and you read it. So I, I may not know how to open Psalm chapter number 2 verse 7 but I know it because I, our teacher taught us, taught us in, in, in kids class. Do you understand this? And those scriptures, they stuck to me. They stuck to me till today. We called it the golden text. Okay, the golden text. <laughs> yeah, memory verse is what we called it. So Lulu, start doing some memory verse. Some scriptures must really just excite you enough for you to want to save them in your memory. Yeah. Does that not make sense? Just like you watch a movie and some line just sticks like from Terminator, I'll be back. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very that you shall not pass none of the rings. <laughs> like how can you not have scriptures that just sticks in your head? Okay, if you have never done it before, um, you're starting one today. Romans chapter number 8, 1 and 2. Let it stick in your head. If it doesn't stick in Pastor Ivana's head, yeah, I'm just going to fire her. She's no longer be a pastor. That's as <laughs> simple as that. So, nobody's going to escape this. Everybody's going to do it. Okay, do we all agree? Yeah? Yes, Donna, sir. do you yes, agree? Yes, sir. Lulu, say it to yourself again and again. So, you may start by just opening it and reading it, okay? But by the time you open something and you read it like 50 times, come on, man. You begin to say half of it by heart. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? So open it. It's fine. You can start by opening it and reading it to yourself. I haven't done that before. Amazing stuff, Lulu. You can start now. It's even beautiful. You haven't done it before. So it gives you a new vibe, a new experience, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Lulu, open the Bible. Be pacing about in your room and be reading it to yourself. There is therefore now no condemnation for me, Lulu, because I belong to Jesus. And because I belong to him, the power of the life-given spirit has set me, Lulu, free from the power of sin and death. That's all I said you should read to yourself. Read it to yourself again and again and again and again and again. Do you understand this? Until you don't know how many times you've read it. And then when we come on Friday, they will press deeper. I will show you what, what you are made up of. What, what does it mean to be a human being? If I ask you that question, what will be your answer? First of all, what does it mean to be a human being? Oh. Don't try to be spiritual now because... Just, exist, just like a question. You just you're just breathing. The cat is breathing. There's like cat over there. That that cat is breathing. He's a human being because he's breathing. How can your breathing make you human being? Did you hear what Pastor Banner said? <laughs> Pastor Banner said because you're breathing. That's why you're a human being. The cat is breathing. The cow you're is breathing. You're designed a human being. That's what makes you a human. We were designed being. a human being. That's what makes us human being. Yeah, you're okay. a human because you're a human. Okay. And you're not a dog. You're not a cat. So okay. You're so a you're human. a species. Okay, human you're being. A type you're, human, of being. you're a type of living being. Is that, is that you see the wonders that can happen when you press somebody. <laughs> then they now begin to they, be, they start getting intelligent. Initially, that's how stupid all of us are. Until someone places a demand on you and insists, you will just and guess what? Most of the time in life, until problem comes, your intelligence does not switch on you. And so most of your decisions in life is made from the foolish you. Did you realize that? Yeah. Do you know everybody have ability to? And you are endowed with foolishness. Did you know that? In your fallen nature, you are a bag of infirmity, a bag of foolishness. Have you ever done something and you think, oh my God, I'm so dumb. Why did I do that? Has that happened to you before? You did something and you say, oh, yeah. stupid, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody was born with abundance of foolishness. That's what we inherited in the fallen nature. So most of the time when I ask you a question, the first answer comes from your foolish self. Mm. And then it takes when I now insist and say, are you sure? Really? Oh, then all of a sudden now you now start juggling your brain cells. Yeah. Then you now start sounding more intelligent, more refined. Mm. So, in other words, if you don't intentionally put pressure on yourself, you will be a foolish version of you for a very long time. Do you understand this? And the same thing with the Bible. You can be reading the Bible. If I ask you a question, you first of all give me a stupid answer from the Bible. Then, when I now insist and press you, then you now start getting spiritual. Yeah. Did you see this? Let's deliver ourselves from this foolishness Amen. because there is wisdom and God wants to help us. It, that's why you, you have to intentionally apply your heart. If I call a scripture, don't just sit down there, cross your leg and say, yeah, but I know Pastor Ivana is going to read it from the corner. <laughs> that's how to be spiritually dead. Do you understand this? That's why you're still living the lifestyle of the devil because you're not intentional about the lifestyle of Christ. It takes an intentional... Oh, I'll leave you. I don't want to talk too much anymore. Okay, the Lord bless you. Um, I love you guys so much. Um, we're going to continue on Friday, okay? Friday, then we're going to talk about what, what is human being? What is human being? Because if I begin to tell you, follow God's lifestyle, don't follow the devil's lifestyle, you will now begin to argue with me, you will now begin to say, ah, okay, pastor, what about drinking? 
Oh, pastor, what about watching movies? Oh, pastor, can I listen to secular music? I know Lulu has asked that question before. One of one of you, I don't know Lulu or Angel. Can I listen to secular music? What, oh, watch TikTok. can I watch some TikTok? Oh, can I can I watch Insta? Is Instagram the same? You you ask me like a billion and one questions. All these questions are lifestyle questions, yeah. okay? And I can't begin to answer that question. In fact, I can't attempt to answer that question one by one. Tell you why you shouldn't listen to Instagram. Tell, no, there is a there is an intelligent way to answer. I will just tell you about your setup, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then because you see, the reason why you will not ask me, oh, can I put water inside the tank of my car? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in case there's no petrol, can I put water? Can I put water? You know, you will not ask me that stupid question. Mm. You know why? Because you know what a car is, isn't it? You know how, what a car is, okay? You know the setup, so you won't ask that kind of stupid question. Mm. The reason why people ask so many stupid questions when it comes to what should I do as a person is because they don't even know what it means to be a person. They don't even know the setup of human being, mm. at least from God's perspective, okay? The one you've known all your life is from the devil's perspective. That's why you fit in so perfectly. It's like a no-brainer. Isn't that what we should all just do? So on Friday, we're going to press into what makes you Lulu? What makes you Donna? What is Donna? What is Lulu? What is human? Mm. And how can we be God's kind of human? Mm. Those are God's children. Men made of flesh and blood with spirit and soul controlled by God and living a certain predetermined lifestyle. What does that mean? We're going to find out Friday. I love you guys so much. Listen to this message again and again and make sure you do what I've told you to do mm. and take it as an instruction from God and then we, we come back on Friday to press for that. God bless you. I love you guys so much. I'll see you on Friday. Have a winning week ahead. Enjoy the rest of your week. The Lord is with you. I love you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm.